A man arrives at the gates of heaven, and St. Peter asks, Denomination? The man says, Presbyterian. St. Peter looks down the list and says, Go to room 24, but be very quiet as you pass room 8. Another man arrives at the gates of heaven, denomination, Lutheran. Go to room 18, but be very quiet as you pass room 8. A third man arrives at the gates, denomination, Methodist. Go to room 11, but be very quiet as you pass room 8. Curious, the man says, I can understand there being different rooms for different denominations, but why must I be quiet when I pass room 8? St. Peter looks around, quietly says, Well, the Baptists are in room 8, and they think they're the only ones here. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Our lectionary text comes today from the book of Acts, chapter 2, 42 through 47, and is found in the back of your bulletin. I will be reading from the Common English Bible, and you may follow along. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles. All the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. Every day they met together in the temple and ate their meals at home. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. And the Lord added daily to the community those who were being saved. May God add his blessings to the reading, hearing, and understanding of these words. Let us pray. God who restores, heals, and makes us whole, open our eyes, open our hearts, and open our minds to your work around us. Be in our prayer, in our singing, in our proclamation, and in our silence, each and every day for all people and into all nations. Amen. Today is the fourth week of Easter. We find ourselves in the second chapter of Acts. Tradition has this book titled The Apostles, The Acts of the Apostles, as if Peter, Paul, and a handful of spirit, other spiritual leaders carried out the significant work of the early church. But actually, the account shows the Holy Spirit and a whole lot of ordinary people took the message of Christ to the ends of the earth. The book of Acts illustrates what happens when everyday people, filled with God's power, apply their faith to everyday life and society. So far in the book of Acts, in these two chapters, we have the promise of the Holy Spirit, the ascension of Jesus, Pentecost, and Peter's sermon, followed by 3,000 people joining the movement by accepting Peter's message and being baptized. And then we have Acts 2, verse 42. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. This verse clearly and succinctly lays out the responsibility of the church from its beginnings. This is all we need to hear and do as a community of believers. And some, like Chris Gibbs, would tell me to say amen and sit down. <laughs> Enough said. But what would I do with all this information? In the early part of chapter 2, we find a question that we can start and end each Sunday of our church life. You need to make Acts 2, verse 12, your go-to verse. Here we have a question, what does this mean? Did you know that was in your Bible? So I ask you, what does this mean? Does Parkway Hills match up to these four characteristics? 
devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching. We do Bible study and discussions, so I think so. Devote ourselves to the community, the church community inside these walls, as well as Madison County and the world community outside of these walls. I think so. Devote ourselves to shared meals, fellowship time together, potlucks, Wednesday night meals, regular communion. We are Methodists, however, so yes, we do. Do we devote ourselves to prayer, individual and corporate, sharing everyone's needs, everyone's joys as well? I think so. But is it enough? But let's take this one step further with respect to the early church as it compares to our church in 2017. I ask you to look at these six verses again and again. What one theme word have you heard this morning? And what one theme word would you assign to this passage that fully describes the early church and the church now? Anyone want to share? You got two of them. Community. Community is defined as a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. Many of us remember the communes of the 60s, but they are defined as a group of people living together and sharing possessions and responsibilities. The kibbutz is a communal settlement in Israel, in which wealth is held in common and profits are reinvested in the settlement, meals are prepared and eaten communally. Additionally, in our baptismal liturgy, we as a congregation publicly declare to those being baptized, with God's help we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. What does this mean? East Lake Community Church in Washington State describes their community as follows. We are powerfully drawn to the person of Jesus, his teaching, and even more so his life. So we are experimenting and failing and building a community that collectively follows his way, hoping, trusting, and even doubting that it might seed something better, beautiful in the world, namely, full and abundant life for all creation. We think the truth about life may just be love, and love may just be the way. The Holy Spirit is community, where relationships with each other and the relationship with God become central. The people were in awe of the presence and energy of God. This early community exploded with life and love. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. So is Parkway Hills this church described in Acts 2, 42. Do we practice these words daily? Are we a church where Jesus would belong? Would we welcome Jesus as a member of this church? Would he even be interested? <coughs> because Christianity has become so disconnected from Jesus, many people are getting tired of the church. Before a recent worship service in Iowa, the pastor read aloud a note that was just handed to him. It says, it says here I, that I should announce that there will be no BS. He tucked the note in his pocket and looked at everybody. I'm hoping they mean Bible study. <laughs> People want a church that is true to Jesus, aligned with his ministry and mission, serving the poor, the sick, the needy, the hungry, the naked, and loving your neighbor as yourself. What does this mean? In verse 44, it says, All the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. 
The church community is a life that is not attached to material things. A pastor was met by a church member at the door after worship. The pastor commented on the great tie the man was wearing. The man smiled, thanked him, and immediately, right at the door, took the tie off and gave it to the pastor. Everyone seemed a little shocked and a little embarrassed by such a radical act of public generosity. Afterwards, the associate pastor, impressed by the gift, asked why he didn't compliment him on the car he was driving. <laughs> so Ronnie, you have a great car. And so does Henry, but I didn't get it this morning. <laughs> a church puts mission first and gives generously to programs that feed the hungry, help the homeless, welcome strangers, rescue vulnerable children, and visit people in prison. The church community is open and receptive to others. A church community is also marked by spiritual maturity. In the Jerusalem church, the members devoted themselves to the apostle teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. They made sure that they were nourished by teaching and preaching, communion and prayer, spiritual feeding, was needed before church members could go out and feed the hungry around them. So do we at Parkway Hills nurture our own community and the larger community around us. When we do, the Christian church won't be hated by the world. Instead, it will receive the goodwill of all the people. Nicholas Kristof writes, it is not the bureaucracy that inspires me, or the doctrine, ancient rituals, or even the most glorious cathedral, but rather a Catholic missionary doctor in Sudan treating bomb victims, or an evangelical physician achieving the impossible in rural Angola. Or is it when a retired salesman organizes a community of believers for the building and delivery of bunk beds to kids in the greater Madison County area who have no bed to sleep on. As Bill reported, 59 beds and more delivered and more in the works, nearly 70 families experiencing the community of the Holy Spirit each night. Or is it when two mothers, collectively with six and a half children, and plenty to do, take the time to organize a community of people for the Backpack Buddy Ministry at East Flora Elementary, serving 60 children each weekend for the nourishment of their body so their minds will thrive? Or is it when the Kairos community gives up many Saturdays in an extended period to spread the gospel to the women's ministry prison community? Or is it when a group of women, and could be men too, come here Monday afternoons to make prayer quilts, distributing them to displaced families so that they know the comfort and care that God is with them? Claire Sisk had sent me an email picture, text picture of a quilt from Parkway Hills, from the Flowers House, a child in her elementary school in inner city Jackson had just gotten it the day before. So our quilts are helping comfort young folks. Or is it when a community of, at Parkway Hills makes up packets of essentials for homeless people in downtown and delivers them once a month to Grace Place in Jackson? Or is it a community from Parkway Hills that makes Afghans for newborns? We need a whole lot more right now. You don't have to know how to knit. You just have to know, need the power of the Holy Spirit to be a part of this ministry. And if you don't know how to knit, Shelly and everybody's going to teach you. They do it once a month, I believe. Once every other month. Gentlemen, if you want to learn how to knit and make Afghans, I will join you. When we pull up a chair inviting the next community of faith, of youth, children, or adults who need a welcoming nurturing and loving place to worship? Or is it a when a community of 24 youth 
and volunteers take eight days from their summer to serve the communities of Costa Rica. Or is it Methodist Children's Home? Madcap, graduates moving to a new community knowing their community at Parkway Hills goes with them. This is a community of love powered by the Holy Spirit, exploding with life and love, sharing God's love in other communities in our city, county, state, and world. Is it enough? Mother Teresa says, said, I am not sure exactly what heaven will be like, but when we die and come before God, he will not ask, how many things, good things have you done in your life? Rather, he will ask, how much love did you put into what you did? How much love do we put into our community? How much love do we share with one another? How much love spreads from this place Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? On the altar, we have tangible signs of Parkway Hills, and vis uh, outward and visible signs of our church community in the world. This is a homeless packet. Packets made by Juliet, filled by you with just basic essentials. We need lots of these, because bugs are coming. We have a bunk bed up here. Part of it, ready to be put together, Wednesday night. Bunk beds for a community that sleeps. Our Afghans that are made by our uh, knitters for our newborns and those sick and shut in. Our quilts, prayer quilts, we are well over 600 quilts that have been out into the community spreading the gospel and the love of God. We have given our graduates these throws, blankets, with our symbol on it so they can take their Parkway Hills community with them into their new community. We have backpacks full of food to nourish the bodies so the nourishing the minds at East Flora. We read a lot, once a year for sure, and read across America to the students at East Flora to nourish their minds as well. Here we have a blank spot. A blank spot for you to share in this empty spot. What will you share in the community out of here?